Hey guys, what's up? This is DDP. So following up here, we got another Mavericks victory, a 20-point road victory, in fact, moving them to 12-3 and on the road, which only reinforces the notion that I've been pushing lately, and that is that the Dallas Mavericks are road warriors. Now, the Golden State Warriors, yeah, they're sitting on like eight wins for the year, but you know what? They're not terrible. Like, in the sense that a bad team cannot be terrible, that's what they are. They had won four straight games, including over our friends from the South, the Houston Rockets. They'd won four straight games, the Warriors had. And so they were in a position where they had some momentum behind them heading into this matchup. And yeah, I know that they're the worst team in the Western Conference and the second worst record in the NBA, if I'm not mistaken. But you still had to see how this game shook out. And for the first half, you saw this was a slugfest. D'Angelo Russell, holy good googly moogly, that dude could not miss in this game. And you could say Dallas benefited ultimately because in just 30 minutes of play before he exited with actually a pretty scary injury. Now, he left on his own power, thankfully. But they did have the cart out there at one point, the stretcher out there at one point, prepared to take him off the off off the court. Like it was a big stop down in this game in the second half in that third quarter where Dallas took firm control. But Dallas trailed this game 74-72 in the first half, and in just 30 minutes, D'Angelo Russell had 35 points, four assists, six rebounds on 13 of 21 shooting including 9 of 14 from 3. In the first half, he was cooking. I want to say he made 8 of his first 9 three-pointers. That is a Warriors record for a first half. I, it might be just a half in general. Like, he was cooking to that degree. He was Clay Thompson territory cooking for the Golden State Warriors. But in the end, Dallas hung with them. They weathered the storm. And you know what? With the star power discrepancy between these two teams right now, that should have been the case. Dallas trailed by two at half at, again, 74, 72 at half. Like, that's bonkers and not okay at all from a defensive standpoint. But when one dude goes off for an insane game of his life, 30 points in the first half, you're going to be digging out of a little bit of a hole. The important thing here is that Dallas separated in the second half. And that's what good teams do. Dallas completely distanced itself, scored again uh, I think 114 through three quarters. So Dallas scores more than 40 points in the third frame to basically blow this game wide open. They go on to win by 20. And yeah, things got chippy. Luka records his ninth triple-double of the year. You have a situation there where the Warriors uh, have a guy on their team basically deciding, Chris, it was, Marquise Chris, basically deciding, ah, you know what, I want to try and get me a little piece of Luka Doncic. So he, he fouls Luka. And then he kind of shoves him into the into the crowd in front of the ref. Uh, not a scuffle, but, you know, all the players from both teams kind of ru rush into the territory, rush into the scene, and separate. Nothing crazy. But it's still one of those things where, in the end, Chris has assessed a technical foul. And it's just, it's a continuation of guys trying to pick a fight with Luka. They think, hey, if I get physical with him, I can take him out of his game. But you know what? Luka Doncic in 30 minutes had 31 points, 12 assists, 15, excuse me, 12 rebounds, 15 assists. The emphasis on what I just said kind of got undercut by my own mistake, but 31, 12, and 15 on 8 of 16 from the field, much better shooting percentage from the field, uh, 5 of 8 from 3, 10 of 10 at the line, and 2 steals, and uh, he did have a couple turnovers, but he's a plus 20 for the game. So Luka straight controlling on this game. Back to his old usual self. We talked about that Spurs game being a little bit of uh, an out-of-character game for him as he worked his way back. Not a problem this game. You know, if you remember in that previous 48-point victory for the Mavericks, the last time they faced the Warriors, Luka was doing insane stuff uh, in, in terms of at half, he had more points, assists, and rebounds or something. No, not at half, excuse me. At the end of the first quarter, had more points, assists, and rebounds than the Warriors as a team. So, yeah, he did his job. He did his thing. And speaking of doing their thing, Tim Hardaway Jr., 25 points, 9 of 13 shooting, 6 of 8 from 3. Like, Tim Hardaway Jr., Ah man, I'm I'm reluctant because I still in my in my core feel like he's going to regress to the mean, but you know what? 
I, I'm starting to think that the games in which he's not going to perform very well are going to be more the aberrations as opposed to what we're seeing right now. Right now, in the starting lineup, surrounded by the talent he's surrounded by, he's pretty serviceable for us. I, I mean, most nights he's our third guy. He really is. And, I, and I'm not a huge fan of him being our third guy, but most nights he's been that for us. And tonight, frankly, from a points pr- production standpoint, he was our second guy because KP comes in next at 18 points. From a rebounding perspective, KP, I got, excuse me, that's a typo on there. I got uh, only four boards for some reason for KP. KP had seven boards on the game. So, excuse me, excuse me while I correct my egregious error. KP, seven rebounds. Excuse me. But compared to his normal nights, KP still a little bit of a dial back in the rebounding category. 18 points, 6 of 12 shooting, so 50%. 4 of 9 from 3, 2 of 2 at the line. Four blocks. Four blocks. You know what? I'm going to make a second edit. I'm going to go out of my way to give you a second edit on this because the KP four blocks bears mentioning. Bears big mentioning. KP, uh, from a points production standpoint, 50% from the field. It's sub 20, sure. But it's kind of it's kind of in that territory, within that range. I would say 18 to 22 points is kind of where KP falls in this new identity identity within the Mavericks, and he's within that territory. The rebounds is a little bit back, but the four blocks is more than enough making up for it. This was a game in which Dallas basically was shooting threes out of their damn mind. Seth Curry, big first half for them. I think he had 14 at the half, ends with 17, only 5 of 13 from the field. But Dallas makes a franchise record. Let's see, what did they end up with? I know they I know they reached that 23rd three made of the game, but I want to see what they ended up with. 24 made three-pointers for the Mavericks in this game. That is a franchise record. They shot 24 of 51, which, by the way, I don't know if the 51's a record, but it's a season high at the very least. 47% from three. You shoot 52% from the field, 48 of 92, and 47% from three, you better damn well win that game. Now, I know D'Angelo Russell, yes, before he exited the game, he was going off, and he had Golden State well within this game. Golden State still shot 49% from the field and 46% from three, so it's not like you shut them down, but Dallas, Dallas did what they needed to do. They took control in that second half. Even before Russell's exit, they took control and they asserted themselves. That's what you need. This is a Road Warrior team who has built a 12 and 13, or excuse me, 12 and 3 record on the road compared to just a 9 and 7 record at home. They thrive on the adversity. Now, you know, you go 21 of 21 at the line. Yeah, that's pretty special for the Mavericks there. That is. That's unheard of. I don't think they've had a flawless game like that yet. I think that's the best mark this year at the foul line for them. 21 of 21. Uh, Golden State, 13 of 17. Dallas, 13 turnovers. So just a, you know, a slight tick up. A, a turnover or two up from their normal stand, stature. But you saw in the first half when Dallas struggled to kind of take control of this game, you saw yet another team throwing full court pressure at them. And it really threw Dallas out of its rhythm in the first half. Dallas has to figure that out. We're now talking two and a half games where that has completely uh, disrupted Dallas. And it's not excusable at this point. Like, I understand they're working on it. I understand that they're aware of it. I've heard Rick Carlisle say that they're aware of it and that they're working on it. They just have to get better because you had a slew of turnovers there right before half, whether it was Luka, whether it was KP. I think Hardaway had one as well. It just wasn't pretty. Luka only had three turnovers for the game. But you had two in pretty much back-to-back scenarios there. And KP had one as well, where it's just like, you guys you guys have got to understand how to execute better against this. Because if you don't, teams are just going to keep throwing it at you. And it's pretty much, they're going to keep doing it until you stop it. Dallas adjusted in the second half. I felt like they did better. And as a result, they coast to a 20-point road victory. And yeah, 35 assists. They out-assisted the Warriors 35-28. They out-rebounded the Warriors 46-42 to and tied on offensive boards at nine apiece. Uh, six blocks for Dallas. Four, again, coming from KP compared to three for the Warriors. 11 steals compared to four. 
fewer fouls and definitely a lot fewer technical fouls. Four for the Warriors in this game. So Dallas had themselves a pretty nice game. Uh, for the Warriors, you know, I mentioned earlier Russell going off, and that was crazy in the first half. This would have been a very different game, I feel, had he not exited with the what, whatever injury. The stinger, I, I'm not clear on exactly what the injury was. He had some kind of collision with Luka, and it was unclear if it was like a neck thing, if it was a back thing, if it was a spinal-related injury. I don't know. Best of, you know, best wishes to him, obviously. That's a scary injury anytime you have that kind of extended stop down and then you have to bring a stretch out on the court great news that he was able to leave on his own power able to stand up and walk out uh but this is something that that would have had a big impact on the the difference of this game the second half even though dallas was starting to assume control you have to feel that that would have had a significant difference dallas at one point powered in the third quarter i had a note i took a 26 to 4 run in the third quarter by the mavericks there and that extended just a couple minutes outside of the Russell injury. So Dallas Dallas was cooking, right? They were already rolling prior to that. And it's just something where I would have been interested to know how that second half would have shook out had it not been for the injury. I'm glad, obviously, Dallas gets the win. But I want to see what they're able to do in this continued face of adversity because defensively for Dallas, this was not a great game. Again, you got the Warriors shooting nearly 50% from the field like 46% from three, like you're you're going to be struggling in most nights in those situations. But Dallas made it work, man. I mean, they had, what, 114, 116 through three quarters? They literally met their, their season average, their points per 100 possessions. They met that through three quarters. And they scored 140 in the game. And you still got people who say, hey, we need to put KP on the low block. We need, we need to we need to get him going there. We need to assess him and set him up in that way. It's more about the team than it is about the player. Like, I understand you want to get the most you can out of KP, but you also want to do what's best for the team as a whole. And what we're doing is clearly working, working in historic fashion. So maybe roll with what's working right now. And KP's not hurting very much with 18, 7, and 3 assists, 4 blocks. Hardly a bad game by KP. So let's see what the Mavericks are able to do. They got to go next to the Lakers in this case. They're going to have a matchup at LA with the Lakers. This is going to be an interesting matchup as well. Uh, let me confirm here. I want to confirm the exact start time for this game. It looks like it's an 8.30 tip, East, or excuse me, Western uh, time, West Coast time. Uh, that will be a very late game. It might be something where there's a chance I'm going to have to get the post game to you the following morning. It just depends on my work schedule. I will figure that out. But in the meantime, uh, yeah, we're, we're going into an interesting stretch here. The Lake at Lakers at the seven seated Thunder currently. Uh, then we get a, an extended homestand starting with the Nets and ending with the 76ers. So a lot to look forward to here. I will give a quick call out just so you guys know. I've talked about it a little bit in the community tab. On I, I am orchestrating this currently. On Monday, January 6th, the Mavericks host the Chicago Bulls. If you are a follower of the Sports Fury on YouTube, you know that Josh is a huge Chicago guy. Bears, Bulls, all that. Sean is the Dallas guy on that show. Cowboys, Mavericks, etc., I am trying to orchestrate an event with them in which all of us are going to be at, like basically in a suite, if we can put this together, in a suite at the AAC for that game, and we're trying to get you guys to come out. So I will get more information to you guys this week about that game if you're interested, if you're here stateside and interested in that game. But I uh, would love to meet you guys, would love to see you in person and all that. And the only other call out I have quickly beyond that is... After that game, literally the next morning, I'm going to be flying out on a brief vacation before I start back up at my next semester of school and everything, finishing my master's degree in journalism. So I'm going to be out then for the Nuggets game and the Lakers game in Dallas, hosting the Lakers on the 10th. I will be back just in time for that Saturday's, it's a back-to-back, -back, that Saturday's game hosting the 76ers. So Free free warning, I'm going to be out of pocket, like more so than I've been yet this season. There is a very good chance I miss both 
of those games. It's not my ideal scenario, but it is something that is pretty essential to me. If you've been following this channel for a year, you saw me go out of pocket last January for about a week. And it's just something I need to kind of clear my head and refocus, decide how I want to evolve and grow the channel in this new year, especially now that I'm going to be working around uh, the school schedule and everything. And I'll have another announcement. I've actually kind of hinted at it already, but I don't think anybody has picked up on it. So I'll have another announcement coming, obviously, in the near future as well. But that's going to be a matter for another day for now. So thank you guys for watching. I've been DDP. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.